know of any stories that tell connections between non-humans and Mormons? Well, um, there's a lot of strange stuff that goes on underneath the Mormon temple and nearby the Mormon temple. The Mormon temple, of course, is right in the heart of Salt Lake and it has sub-basements upon sub-basements upon sub-basements. We've been in some of them. And um, it's uh, been reported that uh, right across, well, it's not been reported, it's a fact, <laughs> that right across from the Mormon temple is a downtown urban mall. Uh, I forget the name of it. And in the basement of the mall, numerous times the cleaning people have seen large reptilian figures walking on two legs, scurrying through the scurrying through the basement of the mall. Um, also, and on the floor of the Denver airport, embedded in the tiles as you get off, are little reptiles all over the floor. And in the stained glass windows are swastikas and the fleur de lis. So it's in front of your face right in front of you. I don't, don't even believe what I'm telling you. Go look for yourself. Yeah. Yep. And I have the photographs which I left at home, but I have them. And outside the airport, on a big plaque, it says, dedicated to the people of Denver by the New World Airport Organization. And underneath, underneath Denver Airport, and some subterranean cavern that they built, contractors built something with enough concrete to build a six-lane highway between Denver and Chicago. That's how much is built underneath the airport, which, by the way, has been built an hour away from Denver. And when you drive into the airport, there are cameras that monitor your license plate, no matter where you're from, and when you leave, they monitor again. So whoever goes in, they know who comes out. And if there's anything blocking your license plate, they will stop you and make you clear it off so they can monitor it. What's the underground? The underground is a gigantic holding pen with entrances and subterranean caverns that crisscross North America. And it's built directly over what the government refers to as a reptilian nest. These are nests where there are large pockets of reptilian cultures living there. One of the largest areas extends from um, Mammoth area of California around um, Mount Shasta all the way down to the Mojave, 29 Palms area, and then east to Arizona and uh, what is commonly known as Area 51 in Nevada. That is one of the largest underground reptilian areas. The first full-time self-contained Eden, or biosphere, for extraterrestrial life forms is founded in North America, underground along what is now known as New Mexico and Arizona. Now, this first Eden was created 899,701 Earth years ago. Okay, and this was by the sea car in New Mexico, Arizona border. Okay, they still fancy the desert. They still fancy, they still fancy the desert, the reptilians. I went over to their house. Sometimes I'd go over there on the weekends, and he and I and the, and the mother and the girls, we would take off and we'd go up to Palmdale. Now, that's back in 1959, 53 years ago. And there's only a couple of warehouses out there, military and that kind of thing. This is like 50, 60 miles north of Los Angeles. And we go way out into the desert. And I remember walking out in the desert with him, and the girls would take off with their mother, and they were ro roaming around. He and I would go to um, uh, caves, and he knew right where they were. He drove right up to them. It was the caves going into the ground. One of them had tracks going down, so it was obviously a mining hole. And we went down there, we went way down, we had the flashlights with us, and my girlfriend went with me about halfway, and then she got spoofed and decided to want out, and so we went on down further, just the father and I, until we hit water. 
And he told me, he said, yeah, they were digging down here and they were mining and they hit water and they all died and they're all dead down there. And then other ones, we would he would stop at, we'd, uh, we'd get out, <clears throat> and he would show me, we'd walk up to the opening in the ground as some kind of a, like a little hill, and on the other side of the hill would be a hole, and we'd go around, and I'm looking at this little you know, uh, hole in this side of this little hill, and we'd go down there for a little bit with a flashlight, and obviously somebody made that hole, somebody made that entrance into that hill, and we could shine the light down and see us going down further. And he said, this is as far as we could go. We can't go any further. And he would tell me, I remember distinctly one time he said, we were walking down this hole, and this looked like a mining hole, but there was no tracks there. And, uh, and, he, and then he stopped, and he said, this is as far as we could go. We can't go any further. And, and I said, why not? And he said, well, because there are aliens here. They're down there, and uh, you will be safe as long as you're with me, and I'm safe as long as I don't go any further. I wanted you to see that there are aliens here, and they live down here, but we're not going to go see them, believe me. And we're all right right now, but if we go any further, we'll be in trouble. So I think it's time that we leave. So we turned around and left and came back up. Inside our planet, living 100 to 200 miles beneath our surface, are 1,837 reptilians. This is why children are disappearing all over the world. They are vanishing without a trace. Some of them, some of them are being taken by the grays. Westchester County, New York, the last three years, 5,000 children have vanished without a trace. Without a trace. The government knows what's going on, but they're harmless. To, they're, they can't do any. They're helpless to do anything about it. And the reason they don't want to bring it up is because they let the bastards in here in the first place. They cut a deal. Now, what can we do about it? We right now, if we do nothing, we can do nothing about it, and it'll continue to go on. Basically, we'll be led in the dark, and you'll keep seeing more and more people disappear. Right now, there's 100,000 children totally unaccountable through FBI archives, cannot be traced anywhere. They haven't been murdered. Nobody's ever seen them. I think they're hauled underneath in some of these bases, and they are summarily done away with, and they are literally eaten. Now, that is a scary thing indeed. My question was actually about children and the disappearance of children if you're willing to talk about it. I've said so much about that already. Um, I know that I have been blasted about that, ladies and gentlemen. I absolutely know what I know about the missing children. And uh, I'm not going to apologize for it, and I stand by what I said all those years ago, and I stand by it today. Okay, could you summarize, because we're, we're aware of this as well, so if you could just, in maybe one sentence. We have become a natural resource. Uh, very much how we've used cows, we use cows and other animals. We ourselves have become a natural resource. The younger ones are the most desirable because they're not tainted with uh, chemical poisons in their bodies because they're young. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, uh, they're carnivorous. They are not friendly to mankind, um, at least the ones that are here. Are you saying carnivorous? They eat humans? Yes. And they need to be, they won't eat a dead human. It has to be alive at the time of the killing. Their preference is children. You know, and we've been told, we've been told, you shouldn't talk about that. You know, there are uh, other people say, well, you better not talk about the reptilians. Well, you know, uh, bull, you know, uh, why not? According to the Andromedans, uh, they're responsible for 31,712 children disappearing in the last 25 years from the United States. These children were food. And I'm supposed to just shut up and not say anything about it because people don't want to hear it? That's tough. That's tough. 
You know, Westchester County, in the last five years, 3,000 children in Westchester County, New York, have vanished without a trace. Where are they going? Why are we allowing this to happen? How and why should people stay in denial about it? Now, how are they able to do this? How are they able, mm. to, how are they able, to, how are they able to do it? How are they able to come up out of this from underground and do it? Or do they have There are tunneling Asian systems working? everywhere. They're being helped by the Greys. And also, there are groups within the higher echelon that are actually helping them acquire this. So human beings are abducting the kids and giving them to the Greys who in turn give them to the Alpha Draconians? That's right. That's part of the deal. They won't come up as long as we feed them down there. You understand? It's about human beings selling themselves out. Uh, why are the... Why... Aside from the carnivorous aspect to the Alpha Draconians, why else are they dangerous to humanity? Because they don't like us. And what are they willing to do with humanity? Eat us. There's no need for us. I mean, look, look at where we are. Look at us right now as a civilization, as a society. We'd go out there and roam around way out in the desert. He would tell me about all the extraterrestrial life forms that are here, where they're from, and who's, uh, where, they are, where they are living. And he would, we'd go out and look at the mounds, and he would tell me the different alien groups that are here on the Earth. Uh, and then I've heard that they're reptilians. Is that the, what they call the Draco? Yeah, yeah, the Dracos and Dracos, yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know, but I'm saying I've heard many times that the Dracos or the, or the uh, reptilian, mm -hmm. uh, they come from a, a star system called uh, Draco or uh, whatever, whatever it was. I'm just telling you what I've heard. I don't know. I have talked with so many professional people, airline pilots, uh, high uh, government officials, law enforcement officials, military people, uh, underworld people. I've talked with a lot of people in my life. And so many times as I'm traveling around the world uh, giving lectures on these subjects, I meet people who are very important. And they come to me and say, Jordan, I want to tell you something in private. Mm -hmm. And then I find out who they are. And I'm thinking, wow, man. And they are superior to you in every way, in technological and knowledge and understanding. They have come here from a long way away. They've come here a long time ago. And they've always been here controlling our destiny as a human family.